In a previous video, we looked at how to convert manually between polar and Cartesian coordinates. In particular, we looked at how to take the Cartesian values of J4 and 3 plus J4 and convert them into their polar equivalents. In this video here, we're going to look at the particular example of moving between 3 plus J4 and how we come up with the value of 5e to the J 53.1 degrees. To begin in MATLAB, let's go ahead and enter our coordinate as 3 plus j times 4. And we see that we enter our answer here as 3 plus j, uh, excuse me, 3 plus 4i. And over here it gets stored as the variable answer with 3 plus 4i. Within MATLAB, i and j are interchangeable for the imaginary component, so you can use either one within your calculations. Now, in moving from a Cartesian coordinate to a polar coordinate, there are two important things that we need to know. First is the length of this point in the Cartesian plane, and then the angle. And because we're going to do a couple manipulations of this point, let's save it as a variable, just so we don't have to keep typing in the same number over and over again. So we will save it as x. And so the first thing that we want to know in our conversion is the length of this vector. And so we can ask MATLAB to give us the absolute value, which gives us the magnitude of this vector. And the value is going to be 5. And this should make sense as this would be a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so we know that when we move into a polar system, this should again be length 5. Now the second thing that we need to know is the phase or the angle of this vector. And MATLAB will again give that to us. And so we can say, you know, in this two-dimensional coordinate system, what is the angle of x? And it returns the value 0 0.92. Now, originally we'd said we wanted the angle to be 53 degrees, and this seems to be, you know, really far off from that. An important point here is that MATLAB represents all of its angles in terms of radians. And so this answer here is actually 0 0.92 radians. And to, so to convert to degrees, there's a nice function called rad to degree that will take our answer and convert it to, as we expect, 53.1 degrees. So if we wanted to chain this all together and say, and store it in a variable called phase, let's say the phase is equal to the angle of x, but let's not forget to do radians to degrees, and now our phase should be the value that we want of 53.13 degrees. So let's go back and let's store our length uh, in a variable. And we've got our phase. And so now we have our two variables over here, length and phase. And so we know our value would be 5e to the j, 53.1 degrees. Now, just to double check, let's go backwards from a polar system into a Cartesian system and just make sure we did it right. So if we took this length and this phase and tried to go back to a Cartesian system, we should get 3 and 4 in the real and complex lines. So our real value should be the length times the cosine of the angle, which here is gonna be the phase. And so again, because we've stored phase as degrees, we do not wanna type this. We wanna make sure that phase is represented in terms of radians. And so whereas before we had rad to degree, here we're gonna use degree to radians to convert this value back in uh, to go from degrees to radians and we're going to get length 3 as we expect. And let's do the same thing with our complex value which will be the sine of the phase and we should get the value 4 and we get exactly the value 4. So these are the main functions that you need to use to move between a Cartesian and a polar coordinate system. We have ABS to find the length for absolute value we have angle to find the angle between points, and then radians to degrees, and then degrees to radians to help move between our different angle measurements.